So the next talk was supposed to be given by uh, our resident. He did this as part of his um, clinical research project. So he's not here, so unfortunately you have to bear with me for another 15 minutes or so. So this is just a comparison of stereotactic body radiation therapy done conventionally, um, meaning here conventionally is like a normal linear accelerator that you know, and comparing that versus a helical delivery like thermotherapy. So again, for stereotactic plants, we need a high dose conformality and large dose gradients. Um, conventional stereotactic um, radiation therapy, you will use a large number of non-coplanar beams. For helical stereotactic therapy, um, is, like TOMO is more IMRT-based, and you will use a large number of beam angles. The MLCs is binary, and you have fixed field sizes with a mo moving couch, so it's a helical treatment. So we have looked at six patients, which was treated with 7 to 10 conventional non-coplanar beams and immobilized using the electa body frame and abdominal compression. Um, we prescribed 95% of the PTV should receive 48 gray in four fractions for all six of these patients. And we used the constraints of RTRG 915 for the 48 gray um, arm as a metric. So for the conventional, we normalized to 60 gray, prescribed to the 80% isodose line, and we used CMS XO with the superposition um, algorithm for calculation. For thermotherapy, now the problem is with thermotherapy, um, like any IMRT program, if you try to plan, you try to make a homogeneous, um, homogeneous dose distribution. So in order to sort of force, try to force the same thing as, as what we do with the conventional um, stereotactic, uh, we say the GTV minimum dose should be about 52 gray and a maximum dose of 60 gray. We use the field size of 2.5 centimeter, a pitch of 0.123 and a modulation factor of 1.5. We had to use a very small pitch here in order to allow enough time um, for the gantry to get all those dose delivered. If you make a pitch too high, then the gantry has to spin so slow to get the dose in that it's not deliverable. The plans was then exported to focal sim um, to calculate the isodoses, and the DVHs were then exported to MATLAB for comparison. So this is just an example in this table of the uh, volume of the tumors of these patients, the maximum dimensions of these tumors, and the location of the tumors. And this is just an example of, on the right, you can see the thermotherapy isodized distributions, and on the left, you can see it for conventional LINAC. Um, so notably, you can see here that the low-dose cloud, if you look at the 10-gray cloud, is much larger for thermotherapy than for your conventional treatment. Um, this is because you treat from a lot of angles. So your, your low-dose volume that you give to the patient is larger for your thermotherapy machines. And I will talk a little bit more about that later on. So this is just the other six patients. So for results, the maximum dose fell within the GTV and was within the allowable range of 53 to 80 gray. And the thermotherapy plans had a lower maximum dose than the conventional plans. So you can see that you get... Uh, sharper um, DVH curve for, with thermotherapy, as I said earlier, because it's a IMRT, it tries to make it homogeneous, so you really have to try and force uh, more heterogeneous dose distribution to get a sharper dose gradient um, with the thermotherapy plants. So for most organs, maintained equivalent doses for the two different planning systems, um, just what was of interest here was the lungs. The dose to the lungs was higher for the thermotherapy plants, although at V20 it was only about 1% higher, which is not much, but at V5 the increase was about 50% from 20% to 30%. So you gave a higher lung dose with the thermotherapy, and that's, again, just because of the large number of beam angles that you treat from. So for the conformality index, 
uh, which is determined by the ratio of the volume enclosed by the prescription dose to the volume of the PTV. Um, it must be less than 1.2 for no deviation of, to the protocol and 1.5 for minor deviation. The thermotherapy plans were significantly better than the conventional LINAC plans. Um, four out of six conventional plans had minor deviations and one out of six of the thermotherapy plans, and none of the plans had major deviations from the protocol. So for the dose gradient index, this is determined by the ratio of the volume enclosed by the 50% prescription isodose line to the volume of the PTV. So the dose gradient index changes with the PTV volume. As you can expect, as your PTV volume gets larger, your 50% um, prescription line should get larger. Um, the conventional plans are, uh, have a significantly smaller dose gradient index than that of thermotherapy, as you can expect too, because you don't treat from as many angles, so there are regions in the patient which get no dose. But what is interesting is shown in the next slide, that if you plot the 50% isodose volume against your PTV volume, um, you can see that it's increased as you expect. So I tried to do a linear regression um, to the CMS or the conventional plans, um, and you can see a linear regression work more or less good for that. Uh, for the thermotherapy, it doesn't work at all. So if you look at the right-hand side where you look at the ratio of the 50% isodose line to the volume of the PTV, it stays more or less constant for the conventional linear accelerator plans, while for thermotherapy, it's clearly decreasing as function of the PTV volume. Now, I think what's actually happening here is that the PTV uh, the um, the 50% isodose line um, does not increase as fast for thermotherapy as for the conventional plants. For the conventional plants, it increases much faster because as you increase your field size, you lose your advantage of um, regions of the patient that doesn't receive any dose. So um, that's why you get that increase. So for very large um, volumes, you can see that you will actually have better plans with thermotherapy than those on a conventional linear accelerator. So the max dose 2 centimeter away is determined by the maximum dose 2 centimeter radially outward from the PTV. Um, the conventional plans at five minor and one major deviation. The thermotherapy at none deviations. Because you have much more beams, um, you can reduce your weighting of each beam much more. So you can see that the thermotherapy deviations were significantly smaller. So the treatment times for the thermotherapy plans was between 10 to 15 minutes, which is less than, well, if you include imaging, say it's about 20 to 25 minutes, which is much less than the 40 to 50 minutes that we do for the conventional plans. Um, although the thermotherapy plans consistently deliver about 40% more volume, more dose per volume than the conventional plants. So just to conclude this, the thermotherapy is a viable treatment modality for stereotactic body radiation therapy. Um, the sparing of the uh, organs at risk was found to be equivalent for the two uh, modalities. Two out of the three indexes were superior for the thermotherapy plants over conventional plants, um, but that depends on the size of your tumor. Um, Thermotherapy non-target integ integral dose was, however, higher, and it is feasible to treat stereotactic radiation therapies with uh, thermotherapy. So, thank you.